Hey guys, Abby Lifts here and welcome to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys seven steps that you can take if you want to lose weight without tracking your calories. Let's just dive straight in. To start off, I want to explain what is necessary not only to lose fat, to lose it while maintaining or even building muscle just to make sure that you have a nice toned body and that you've got shape once you've lost the weight. First things first is a calorie deficit is going to be necessary, but just because you need to be in a deficit does not mean you need to track everything all the time. You can very well be in a deficit without tracking your calories. That's number one. Number two is going to be a high enough protein intake. This is very, very important. It's not going to lead to fat loss, but it's going to allow you to build slash maintain muscle during a fat loss phase. And lastly, this is more training. Make sure you're lifting heavy weights, hitting your entire body at least twice a week as what I would say is kind of the recipe for an ideal fat loss phase. Obviously tracking is going to make things optimal. The more data we have, the more accurately we can make adjustments and the quicker we can see progress. It is not necessary and in today's video I'm going to be giving you guys the tools that you can use to get there. So step number one is going to be to reduce your current meal or snack frequency by one. Let's say you're used to having four meals per day, I would only have three meals per day. If you're going to be having fewer feed opportunities, the likelihood of you overeating is going to be diminished by quite a bit. So by simply just reducing your meal frequency, you can actually reduce your caloric intake without having to track your calories. Another alternative is if you're a very snacky person, just stitch the snacks. So if you tend to have three meals and two to three snacks every day, just stick to your main meals. That's going to just shave off some calories without even having to track anything at all. Now that you've reduced your meal frequency, the second step is to standardize your meal. Meals. What I mean by this is make it clear what are going to be the components of every meal. Are you going to have a protein source, a carb source, a vegetable source, and a fat source? Or are you just going to have protein and veggies? Just try and standardize each meal. For example, meal one can be protein, veg, carbs. Meal two could be protein, fats, and a piece of fruit. You know what I mean? So make sure that every single meal you're standardizing the components of the meals, but also the portion sizes. And what I mean by portion sizes, you don't even have to weigh these things. You can just eyeball it. So I would usually just to simplify things, count a portion of something as a palm sized portion. So a palm sized portion of protein could be like a piece of chicken breast or a piece of like white fish, you know what I mean? So always use like the palm of your hand as a guide for portion sizes and that way you can use that unit of measure basically for every meal and standardize your meals. That way you're not really tracking calories but you have an idea of how much you're eating every single day. Now that you've standardized your meals, step number three is going to be to double your vegetable intake. Multiply your current protein intake by 1.5 and then I would also half your current carb intake and half your current fat intake. By doing this, you're not really going to be eating like less food in terms of the amount of volume of food you're going to be eating. Like the size of your meals might not change much, but this is gonna actually reduce the calorie content of your meal. So again, without having to count anything, just by making these slight changes, you're gonna be able to see amazing results. And just in case you really wanna make sure you're getting enough protein, I would do one palm-sized portion of protein per 40 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 120 pounds, for example, that's three palm-sized portions of protein per day. If you weigh 160 pounds, that would be four of these palm-sized portions of protein per day. That doesn't mean it has to be four meals. You can have multiple protein servings within the same meal, but this is just to make sure you're eating enough protein. It's gonna keep you full and make sure you are building muscle mass while losing fat. Now, step number four is super important, and that is to weigh yourself every morning. And I also want you to take measurements and progress photos in similar lighting once a week. This is going to allow us to assess our progress, and we're gonna have to look at these progress metrics to know when we've hit a plateau and when it's time to make a change to our current diet or our current activity levels. Which brings me to step number five. If you notice a plateau, meaning that your measurements and your body weight are kind of stagnant for like two to three weeks, you're going to want to reduce your carb and fat 
intake. So reduce the amount of carbs you're having per day, the amount of fats you're having per day, keep your protein and veg as high as you can. And by doing this, you're gonna put your body back into a calorie deficit, again, without counting the calories, and that should help see some more weight loss down the line. Step number six is going to be to minimize meals out and alcohol and liquid calories. Again, just by reducing the frequency of these things, you can drastically reduce your calorie intake over the course of the entire week. So imagine you're someone who goes out for food three to four times per week. If you simply cut that down to once or twice per week, you can see amazing results because restaurant meals are very, very high in calories. And same with your drinks. If you go out for alcohol multiple times a week, give yourself a once or twice per week kind of allowance for alcohol. Give yourself a number of drinks per outing that you're allowing yourself. And I would always offer things like, you know, liquor and spirits with like a diet drink instead of going for a cocktail because cocktails tend to be way higher calorie. And other forms of liquid calories are things like soda or coffee. I would also recommend getting the diet version of sodas because they're zero calorie and are not bad for you at all. When it comes to coffee, stick to things that are like skim milk or almond milk and go down a size as well. That can save you hundreds of calories throughout the week as well. And now my seventh and final tip on how to lose weight without counting your calories is to increase your step count by three to 5,000 per day. You'd be surprised at the power of walking, of just moving a bit more every single day. It really does compound. So what I want you to do is if you don't have like a Fitbit or an Apple watch that counts your steps for you, you probably have like a Apple, iPhone or an Android. These phones have apps on them that automatically count your daily step count anyway if you keep your phone near you anyway. So go into those and check out what your average has been over the past 14 days. Take that average, add three to 5,000 steps per day to that average and stick to that goal on a daily basis. That's gonna help increase the caloric deficit that you are in without counting a single calorie. So you guys, those are my seven steps on how to lose fat without counting your calories. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any other tips and tricks that don't involve counting calories to lose weight, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments below. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Abilifts. I post daily fitness content on there. And I'd also love to know what you guys want to see next in terms of content or educational videos. Drop a comment down below and hit the subscribe button for more weekly content. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye.